very, that pal's taking a while. I had to go change my shirt and everything. I was soaked in sweat. But I'll have to get back at it, I suppose. So this is basically what I'm gonna do. I got one here done. Um, this is basically just laid out there now. I've got it all cleaned up around the edges a fair bit. There's still a little bit of this membrane on it. I tried to get as much of it off as possible, but that's gonna be have good enough there now. I'll put a good coat of salt on it. And this one here still needs to be trimmed up. I might be cutting off a good chunk of the, the limbs on it because this one here, my plan is to turn it into a blanket of sorts for my daughter, as that's the bear we got together. This one I got with my son. Man, this is a nice bear. We had a great time, but he put in all the work. I wouldn't say all the work, but he put in a lot of the work when it came to uh, baiting in this thing. And uh, we got this bear and we were proud of it. And then his sister come out the next day and just to give it a shot, but that's just the way it goes. He understands. Um, so we got lots of salt over here as well. Got a couple boxes of salt. I know some people say don't use iodine salt, but whatever it is what it is, we're gonna try this out and see how it goes. I'm gonna put you guys up in this tree here now so you can see me salt it. So now that this one's all ready to be salted, I'm going to uh, dump this on here. And you wanna make sure you kind of massage it in right to the edges. You wanna get all the salt in around the little bits of skin, the fat that's left on it. You'll never get all the fat off the bear, bear hide. You'll never get all the fat off it. So you got to make sure you salt it good here. Don't be afraid if you come across a part you missed, just get that excess off. Make everything easier later. All right, just gonna intervene here just for a second. What you guys are looking at is my neighbor's new business. He's starting up a business where he's selling trapping supplies and baits and lures and scents and you name it. If he doesn't have it, he'll probably be able to get it for you. All the information is in the description below, but essentially, if you place any order with him between now and the end of October, send me a receipt and a proof of the order and you'll go in for a giveaway. I'll be doing a draw and personally be giving a $150 gift card to White Pine Trapping Supplies just to show appreciation to my neighbor and to show you guys that there's quality people out there still keeping traditions alive and it's nice to support local businesses and even businesses abroad. So again, any order placed between now and October the 31st, please send me just a copy of your receipt or confirmation of your order and your name will be put in a draw for a chance to win a $150 gift card to White Pine Trapping Supplies. Thank you all, you all rock. I appreciate it. Thank you for showing support. Back to the video. I salted these twice and after after the first 24 hours I salted it again and then I put them in the fridge and they've been sitting there for about three days um, at that point I'm just gonna leave them there I was basically just waiting for my tanning solution to come in so I could just kind of get it all going so if I need to take a break in between doing this uh, this is probably the time to do it after the second salt I'm sure not everybody's gonna agree with the way this is done there's so many different ways of doing this but it's just how I do it. I am no professional. And what I did is I made a brine, a salt brine in there. And it's a half pound of salt for every gallon of water. And when you, 
Oh, that's tough. Just like leather here now, a little piece of a membrane, but I'll get that afterwards. But you want enough of this salt brine to basically, you're kind of pickling it. Um, it'll finish that reverse osmosis where it sucks out all the moisture. And, uh, but you want enough that it's completely submerged underneath and you're gonna wanna weigh it down with something because it tends to wanna float. So, just trying to get out any of the excess salt that I don't really need. Messy progress, but hey. Don't be surprised that after your first salt, you'll notice a lot of oil and water kind of pooled in it. That's natural. Your second salting though should come out pretty much just, you know, it's not gonna be soaking wet, but it's, it's gonna be damp because it's still gonna be pulling out that moisture. kill an animal and you flesh the hide out you learn a lot more about that animal like there's there's parts on this is really hard to tell but you can tell there's scarring from another bear you can see claw marks where there's scars on the inside of the hide so you can really tell a lot about the bear you harvested or killed whatever you prefer to call it dog tank. and it's just going to go in this for about uh, six to eight hours Smaller one will go in the smaller tub, just like that. You want to make sure you like get it really mashed around so you get all the bubbles out of it, so there's no spots that aren't exposed to the pickling. And this might be one of the first times your fur is touching water. It's gonna get dirty. It's gonna look gross. It's gonna look pretty darn gross. So I'm going to put some, uh, probably some rocks on that and weigh it down and I'll come out periodically and just stir it around. Like I said, you want to make sure it's all exposed to the brine, to the salt bath. From the wife's garden. She doesn't need to know. Shoot, I'm going to need a couple more. She might notice now. You can see. So uh, you can see pretty gnarly. I mean, some people, some people will uh, like to wash it before this, give it a rinse off, but it's not really necessary. It is just a salt bath. Now with some fresh water, I'm just gonna dump this in, give it a slosh around. And then I'll just do the same thing with the other one. Rinse it off, hang it up. We're gonna let it dry a little bit throughout the day. So I brought the hides in here, and this part of the uh, chicken coop. Now that I don't have uh, chickens anymore, and uh, <clears throat> just to expose them a little more, I got a fan over here just blowing on them, and uh, I let it dry out enough so it has a bit of a cap on the membrane, so you can, you can kind of hear how it's getting stiff now what i'm going to do so a lot of people at this point will take a knife uh, that's the traditional way to do it use a sharp object to kind of thin the hide uh, what i'm going to do to kind of clean up all the excess bits of membrane that uh, got away during the fleshing process and everything is i'm going to be using this angle grinder on the, with the wheel brush and uh, essentially all i'm going to do is just while it's running obviously i'm just going to skim down like this I did a little bit here already, you see how nice and clean that is? And I can thin that, I can continue thinning this down more and more and more if I want. Now I'm not too concerned about shrinkage with these because uh, it's just for personal use. But And when I get close to the edge, just so I don't snag it, I'll be using this. Some really heavy grit uh, sandpaper and I'll just be doing right to the edges with that. And I'll be using doing it like on top like this on the 
basically using the post like this and you can do it like that as well across the post that'll help thin the hide and you can focus on certain areas you might have might be a little thicker but you see it, it works it just takes a bit of effort I gotta get at it Bear is greasy. Do not skimp on the dish soap. Dawn, I got palm olive. Dawn is known to be the better stuff apparently, but whatever. This is just warm water, not hot, just warm. And I'm going to wash it good twice at least and then hang it up to dry or drain. That is the smaller pelt. I'm already starting to get a little bit of slippage, um, but I expected it because it's this is where it stretches around the belly. This particular bear was very, very thin in that area, anyways. I'll trim all that off. Probably use that as leather for something else. But I won't bore you with this because it's pretty much what you see is what you get. But I'm just going to agitate this for a couple minutes and repeat the process. All right, so what I have here is this stuff. I got it on Amazon. It's got great reviews, so we're giving this a shot today. And it says to warm it up in some warm water, which is what I did here. Right, a few grass trimmings man, on this thing. But essentially, now that it's like it's still moist, pliable, um, I'm going to just add this on and massage it in. Make sure you get right to the edges, like I said. All right, I'm going to put the camera down, finish this off. I mean, you don't really need to watch all this. It's exactly like I said it is. So now I just got to fold it, flesh on flesh. Like that. And then we're going to leave it for about 12 to 16 hours. All right, so it's actually a couple days after we have the pelts hung there, one there. Um, I had them over in the shed there with a fan on it for about two days. I didn't show you guys that because it was literally just me unfolding what I did and hanging it up with a fan on it. It's literally as simple as that. Uh, but now we have a nice warm day. Humidity is not too, too high. And so I got them all hung up here now to dry them out just a little bit quicker. I got a feeling I might have to let this one dry out almost entirely and then re-moisten it just a little bit with the warm water and then, then work it. Just because this side is drying out a lot quicker than this side here. I also might just hack off some of the stuff that's taking too long to dry. Because it's, you know, it's not the best parts of the skin. We'll see. We'll see. But right now they are ready to be worked a little bit. So we're gonna go find a tree and do that on. My wife loves my impeccable timing. Um, we're moving. <laughs> 
the movers are all here packing our stuff up. Great time to be doing a few hides, huh? people use a rope and just pull it tight between something do it that way some people just stake two by four in the ground some people just use a railing you get the gist of it some people just use their hands how the spots that were how it's starting to resemble more like a supple leather but there's some spots that still need to soak in more of that solution that's on it Grab it and give it a little tugs. Well, it's been a few weeks here now, so I got I got the hides laid out here and a piece of one down here so I can show you um, basically how to finalize this. If you see this one here, it's still very dirty. Now this is not flesh or anything, these are just remnants of, of the leather and stuff and the rough pieces that need to be cleaned up. But what I do to clean this up, to get it more like this one over here, and as you can see it's a lot cleaner looking, is I just use this wire wheel on this uh, angle grinder, and I would put on a pair of boots, step on it, pull my feet apart, put some tension, and then I would just run it like this. As I got closer to the edges though, however, that's when I'd use sandpaper and just kind of work it like that and push it off to the sides until it thins out and cleans up. And then eventually you'll end up with something more like this. It's a lot thinner, more supple. This is being used, uh, my son wants to use this for uh, in his room. He's got it made for like the footing of his bed. But that's the, the pellet there once it's done. So and that's how that's how we do it. Well, that's how I do it. I know there's a lot of people way better than me at it and way more experienced and they're probably rolling their eyes right now looking at me do this, but this is how I do it for personal use. And it didn't cost me much at all. So, so I'm gonna take the angle grinder to this one, finish sanding that one, and then I'll sand that one. So they both end up looking like this piece and then we're done. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a bit of a long video, but uh, it, you know, it's, it's a long process and I kind of just want to put it all in one video for you guys just to make it easy. However, see this mess over here? I'm building a Aldrich trap so I can foot snare a uh, black bear. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing a quick series on how to trap black bear, how to make the traps, uh, how to set up the trap, how to avoid certain issues with trapping when it comes to black bear. Uh, but it's going to be a whole series. It's going, I'm going to show you how I process the meat, making sausages, all the way once again to turning it into this here. So if you're interested in that, remember to subscribe and all that fun stuff. But uh, thank you guys again. I'll see you on the next one. I appreciate it and have a good one. And don't forget, don't forget to uh, to support my neighbor and, and help out with the giveaway. And uh, you guys can hopefully benefit from that as well. So thanks again. Bye. One thing no one talks about after you're done tanning hides is the smell of the tanning solution sometimes and just the mixture of with the as it's tanning with the flesh and all that stuff. It comes out with sometimes a not so nice of a smell. Um, so this is how I get rid of it. This is just a small water bottle. The ratio is pretty much the same. It's half peroxide and then the rest is water. There is two tablespoons of baking soda in it and then a small drop of this sent away non-scented soap. And then you just spray it on the hide. I put it on this one over here already and it has no smell whatsoever. It's extremely clean smelling, has no residual chemical smell or anything else. Just make sure that once you spray it on and you rub it in, you put a hair dryer or something to it and get it dried real quick. 
not too much heat. I'm lucky. I got this here, nice little heater above my garage, so I can just blow it down and do the whole thing. Carol, bye.